How much is a website? And then what does it cover? Typically clients, they do ask such questions and does it come with a range? Does it come with a price point? Or is it customizable? So most times when people talk about websites, right? A lot of times there's already pre, um, I call them kind of content management systems. That's already created like Wix, Squarespace or WordPress, right? Um, but the differentiator between these three platforms is huge. Uh, with Wix and Squarespace, customization is very limited. So um, with J29 Creative Group, we're kind of more a WordPress shop because it allows us to have the ability to allow our client to have a content management system at a lower cost. Now, can we customize and code in Drupal or JavaScript in different languages? The answer is yes. But do you want to pay for a $10,000 website? The answer is probably a no. So um, with WordPress, it does kind of cut you down the development time. So we're able to do most five page simple websites um, starting at around 1200. And we typically do half upfront and then the half when the project is completed. And we want this website to be 100% yours. And a lot of um, agencies or web developers, what happens is they hold you hostage um, through hosting. So a lot of times when you want to cancel with them, they can't take the um, admin rights with them and you have to pay uh, uh, maybe $500 or even um, a $2,000 contract to break the contract. Um, we don't do that at J29 because we believe, hey, we're confident at what we do. We want the website to be yours. And typically um, when we create a website, um, let's say at the $1,200 price point, that's a basic website, anywhere from five to eight pages. So um, think of it as your home, about us, services, blogs, and contact us page. So um, an offshoot question to that is that uh, we are benchmarking um, a 12,000, a 1,200 with, the, with a five to eight uh, web pages against, I would say, if you're talking about 10,000, that would be like a corporate portal at that level. And there would be many of the customer groups that are individuals, that are people who wants to have a little megaphone to, to just protract their voice. And the way they do their comparison is to look at what J29 has to offer versus the freelancers or the individual consultants or software developers that we can find uh, in Fiverr.com or Freelancer.com. So uh, with that, with that, what are your views when it comes to comparison purely based on price points and purely based on the gig economy offering against J29? Yep, so you get what you pay for. That's what I always said. So okay. with J29, we're composed of, uh, so my background, I'm a developer by trade. So I was a software engineer. So, um, and then we have a team of both developers and also designers. So um, when you come to J29, you're not getting a one man team. You're getting a 10 to 15 man team. So um, what the problem that when you go with freelancer, even myself in the past when I was a, you know, I was actually a marketing director for a corporate world and um, I was tasked to sometimes subcontract our websites. What I found with freelancer is I'm not guaranteed that tomorrow they're not going to start their new job or they might disappear, right? Um, when you have a company like J29, you're back behind our corporation, you know, we have other staff members that's gonna fill in the gap if someone quits. So you're always get, we're dependable for years to come. I, we don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. And on top of that, um, a website is also a marketing component. And a lot of people forget that. Um, your customers that you're trying to reach out to, they're not developers and too many people get that mix up, right? And I'm a developer myself. It's great to have a website that's efficient and runs well, but your website has to be able to speak to your audience. It has to be able to drive conversions. 
That's a very interesting perspective about that. I think there's a lot of、uh, our prospect and our clients at the individual level. They might not be thinking that far ahead in terms of、uh, the purpose of the website because they're probably just having their heads predicated on I need this and therefore it's a tool for me to do what I have to. But I think、and、this would be a there, very nice there's one. There's an other point here too, Aldrich, that people don't think about. This、yep. can you can you grow with your website? I mean, I can't believe how many clients came to me that they pay for a two hundred dollar or two fifty dollar website on Fiverr.、Mm -hmm. But what happened is, two years later, their companies grow, their business grow, and now they have to pay for another website. The websites we build is on an open source platform. WordPress is open source, so we can add to it. We can change the look and feel. So as your company grows, your site's not static. You own the website, even if you don't go J29. You can take your website to someone else, and they can work on it. It's your website. Very interesting. And I think scalability has to be part of the business model these days. Whether we are a freelancer, we are a small or medium business, or a big one. Um. So, so just to transition to the next question, which is really. Uh, thinking for the customer, and, and that would be、uh, pretty much a philosophical question. And that would,、uh, and that is, why do we need a website? I think today, right in the today's social media-driven world,、um, it's great to have social media content and be out, put yourself out there. But you have to think of the website as kind of like your net. So a website is so important because that's how you go drive. People back to、uh, your business, you know. And now, how are you gonna、yeah, catch their attention, right? Because you gotta remember, social media changes day in and day out. The algorithms change, the platforms disappear. Your website does not go away. And if you're doing it right, you can have evergreen content. And what I mean by evergreen content is is like blogs or articles or copy that's on your website, videos that can last through the ages. So if you can build traffic to your website, it's very valuable. I think that would be a very very interesting point, especially for the prospects that are trying to figure out. If they do need a website to their business, I'm thinking about the individual consultants, the freelancers, and things like that. Because if all they're thinking about is the budget and the cost and the shoestring、uh, constraints that they have, then naturally their first go-to will always be social media. Because、yes. by and large, social media is、uh, readily accessible,、uh, it's free, and that's where everyone is. So they might not see. The jump in terms of the value add to have their own website, but I think you articulated that pretty well.、Uh, so that will bring me to the third question, and that is really on the matter of like,、um, not so much about the why, but really who should have a website, and is it true that、uh, we should all have our own website? I think it's important. I think everyone should have a website because、uh, in the digital age,、um, we have to.、Um, I mean, we hear about personal branding a lot. We definitely have to build a presence online, and、um, mm -hmm. if we don't have a presence,、um, we're gonna be forgotten tomorrow, right?、Mm -hmm. And、um, I think if you have a business, any kind of business, coaching, consulting, you definitely should have a website because、um, it's a it's clarity. It's almost like a brochure back in the days, right? A decade ago, you need a brochure so people have an understanding of your offerings, and I think a website can differentiate who you are and what you provide. What about people who are thinking about having a website but doesn't have a commercial intent behind that? Meaning to say, just articulating their views and just show showcasing to the world. Who they are and what they believe in. Do they need a website or social media would suffice? I think social media will survive, survive to a certain level, right? Because、um, if you think of even Mother Teresa, she had her own website.、Um, she has a great voice. You, yeah, she has a great voice. Or even athletes, right? That they have their own website when they're already famous. There's a reason because、um, it's like I said, like back in the days. I think even. Ten years ago, people said、um, you should start buying your .com. 
So you should buy like KevinQuack.com, you know, and um, because now look at how popular personal branding is. And that will probably lead us to the last question of our internal meeting. So how important is it in terms of the, uh, the aesthetics of the website specifically? Look and feel. Um, is there some form of like um, color palette that we should be thinking about? Ease yeah. of reading. How would that be? I think nowadays, um, 85% of um, websites are view on mobile devices. And yeah. a lot of businesses are behind. Um, their website doesn't have a good UI for mobile or iPads. I mean, I have, I came across clients where they don't even utilize their laptop. They utilize everything on their phone. So with that said, I think it's so important that your design is um, a scrolling type format. And then with website, it's important to hire professionals because it changes all the time. You know, um, technology changes. So um, being a web design house, um, we keep up with all the new changes. So for example, within the US, right? Nowadays, you can get Sue for um, accessibility on your website, right? So if disabled people or the blind can't utilize your website, they can sue us. So just today, um, J29 on our own website, we just added um, accessibility functionalities. So that's huge in the US because right now it's kind of like a law where um, uh, if you're a restaurant and bar, for example, um, you need to have accessibility functions. So, so there's, there's design is an important element. And remember, look and feel is everything. Um, most people who go to a website, they look at how fast it loads and then stat, uh, aesthetics, you know. Um, think it's a billboard. Your website's a billboard. And a lot of the design that plays into a website is also the quality of um, the photography. So um, mm -hmm. some websites don't look good because it has um, pixelated pictures. And it, it also reflects your business or you, you know? Um, it's almost like um, people always say, you know, your first impression is everything. So in the business world, your website is your first impression. Very interesting. So that's all I have for today's internal meeting. Anything for me? Yeah, that's it. Good stuff, Aldrich. All right then. <laughs>